Okay, this is a circular pendulum. So here I have a string and it's gonna be kind of hard to do because I'm looking down on it. Um, but a pendulum would be if the thing just swings back and forth like this. So if you look at it from the side, it'd be like this. A circular pendulum is where I hold it up here. Let's see if I can do this. And now instead of going back and forth, I'm gonna go in a circle. Well, that's not a circle. Like this, that's too big. There you go, you get the idea. Okay, so the question is if I know the length of the string and let's say I know the angle, how fast would it have to go in order to do this? Okay, so let's just start with the, the ball at this position right here. I'm going to redraw it over here. Here's my ball. So now what forces are acting on this ball? Of course I have the downward gravitational force, mg. Now what else is touching the ball? The only thing touching the ball is the string, and the strings can only pull in the direction of the string, right? So I have this, I'll call it T, like that. Those are the only two forces I have. Um, now, if you look at the diagram, this angle right here is theta, so this angle is theta. And let's go ahead and put in our coordinate system Let's call this the x-axis and this the y. Now what do we do? Well, what we're doing is using ideas of, that we know about the motion to solve for forces. That's really what we're doing. And I don't have an equation for tension. I can't say this is the tension formula. But what I can say is that I know the direction of the tension force and I know something about the motion of this ball. Because as this thing moves around in a circle like this, its vertical acceleration is zero. So I can write F net in the Y direction, just the Y component. Is, if I wanted to write F net, it'd be like this. F net equals T plus MG equals MA as vectors, but I, that's not very useful. If I break it into the x and y direction, I can say the net force in the y direction has to be zero, right, because it's not accelerating. So what forces are in the y direction? Well, I have my red marker is dying. I should have gotten a new one. So here is the y component of the tension. Here is the x component of the tension. So this whole length is t, the tension, and this is the adjacent side. So this is going to be T cosine theta is the Y component of that tension. What's the Y component of the gravitational force? It's going to be minus mg, and that equals zero. So in this case, I actually know theta is 25 degrees. I picked that. I know m, I know g, so I'm pretty good right here. Let's go ahead and solve this for tension. That's the only thing I don't know. So if I add mg to both sides, I get T cosine theta equals mg, and then I can solve for t. t equals mg divided by cosine theta, which, so I know everything there. Now let's look at the y direction, I mean the x direction. So in the x direction, what forces are there? I can say f net x equals, there's only one force that has a component in the x direction, and that's t. So the opposite side of this triangle is the x component of the tension, so that's going to be sine of theta. So it's going to be minus t sine theta and that's going to be equal to uh, m a x. So here's something we know about a circle. If it's moving in a circle at a constant speed then a is going to be equal to m v squared over r. That's the acceleration in the pointing in the magnitude of the acceleration and the direction is pointing towards the center of the circle. So in this case, it's, it's accelerating that way in the same direction as that component of the force and have this magnitude. So I'm going to say this is equal to m negative v squared over r. So it, it's in the negative x direction. The negatives cancel. I'm trying to solve for v, so let's just solve this for v. The mass cancels. No, the mass? Oh, the does, it's going to cancel. So I'm going to put in my value. The negative signs cancel. I'm going to put in my value for t, so I get mg sine theta over cosine theta, that's t, and sine theta, so that's what I get, equals m 
v squared over r. Now I can solve for I, the mat, these masses cancel, and I can multiply by r and, and take the square root, and I get v equals the square root of r g. And I have sine theta over cosine theta is tangent theta. Okay, but I don't. I know the length of this is 0.1 meters, but I don't know this r. But I can find it, right? Because now I look at this triangle. Here's 0.1 meter long. The angle is 25 degree theta, so this would be L sine theta. So R equals L sine theta. So I can put that in over here. I, actually, let's put that back as tangent. So I get V equals the square root of R, which is L sine theta, times G times sine theta, so I have sine squared theta, over cosine theta. Okay, let's put it in our values. So again, I'm going to get square root of 0.1 sine of 25 degrees squared, 9.8, divided by cosine of 25. And let's put that in the old calculator. Okay, so again, I'm using my RPN Hewlett Packard 28S. I know you're jealous with the custom battery pack. So I get 0.1 enter, 25 trig sine. Then I have to square that, squared. And then I have to multiply by 0.1. And then I have to multiply by 9.8. And then I have to divide by 25 cosine divided by, now I take the square root. And I get 0 0.439 meters per second, which I don't really care about the numbers. I really care about that. Um, so there you go. Everything has the right units. Let's check real quick because this is meters and this is meters per second squared. So I get meters squared per second squared. I take the square root and I get meters per second. That's good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think everything's good. Okay, there we go. Done.